We start the news from the Ashanti region where the lack of needed equipment is impeding healthcare delivery at the Seventh Day Adventist Hospital at Riamwase in the Setre South District. Authorities say expansion projects initiated at the hospital have come to a standstill, and this is due to funding constraints. The situation has since resulted in congestion and increased referral of cases at the least pressure on personnel and facilities. Nana Sensumensa now reports. Mother and baby unit project has stalled for over 10 years amid congestion at the existing section. Gladys Frimpon is midwife in charge. Currently we have a problem which is affecting child and maternal health. We have four delivery beds which is not enough for the facility, which is not helping us to be able to help a lot of mothers in this vicinity. So sometimes we admit people on the floor. You know, we, we, our aim is to save everybody. But sometimes we admit and the place is not too big to accommodate all of them. Sometimes we have to refer cases to Asamai and Konfanochi. Hospital Administrator Stephen Hammond explains case referrals have increased as a result. Um, we have uh, averagely 14, uh, 69, 69 patients coming in and sometimes the world becomes very full to the extent that we even uh, lay down mattresses on the floor for patients. So because of this kind of challenges, management thought it wise for us to build this new block for the people of Yamwase. But due to um, financial constraints, we've gotten to the uh, lengthen level and we need philanthropics to come and aid us complete this new project for us. Medical superintendent Dr. Michael Addo emphasizes the need to reduce the rate of referrals. We are trying our best to do what we can so that the pressure on the referral facilities will go down. Um, I have accepted posting here to help in the care of patients here. Currently we have even a surgeon in training who will be completing his studies. If he comes and both of us are here working, maybe the cases that we'll be sending out to Kath and other facilities will be reduced. But the current challenges that we are facing is um, mostly um, the facility lacks a lot of equipment and space to even work. Reporting for Joy News, Nana Asensumensa. Here yeah, in the nation's capital, authorities at the Greater Accra Region Hospital, they have begun investigations into an alleged medical negligence at the facility. A 22-year-old man has been allegedly left with serious stomach complications after he underwent a surgery for appendicitis just some six months ago. Harrison Visenya alleges that a nurse at the Ridge Hospital removed the stitches earlier than the surgeon recommended. I was suffering from a stomach pain, so I visited the Mamobi Polyclinic, and they have given me a referral to Ridge Hospital. So when I've been there, they said uh, they have to do surgery for me. So after the surgery, the doctor informed me that uh, on the 10th day that the stitches are supposed to be removed. So they were dressing the wound on the 7th day, a nurse on duty came after the dressing, he started to remove the stitches. And I informed him that, please, the doctor said the stitches should be removed on the 10th day. He said, uh, I am not the one to teach him what to do. He is doing his work. After that, in the midnight, I've seen that the wound has opened from top to down. So I called the nurse on duty, she came and then have a look at it and she said, no, this is above her. So she have to consult a doctor. So I was there when the theater people came that, uh, now looking at the condition, they need to send me back to theater. But the doctor said she will not go to theater and even it is, she is getting late to time. So she wants to do that for me and go home. So she can do the stitching in the dressing room. So we went to the dressing room and then, uh, 
she went and do the stitching for me. But to be sincere, when she do it, she used it to pass the old stitching places again. So after that, in some days after, a nurse came to do the dressing for me. So when she removed the plaster, she saw that the skin had rot and all the stitches were removed on its own. When I came for a review, after the wound is getting healed, my tummy is becoming bigger again. So when I came, the doctor said uh, I should go and be seen in three months' time. By three months, I'm going to see that things are going to be well with me. So I went and I said, oh no. That three months they gave me, still I'm not seeing any changes. It is still becoming and becoming. So I need to come back to see the doctor and see what he will see. So when I came, that was on 31st last month. When I came, he said, uh, they have to examine me. So I lie down after examining and he said, they need to do another surgery for me before I'll be healed. The hospital has meanwhile begun a process for a corrective surgery for Harrison. The fortunate situation is that the date she was given, he was given to come and see the specialist who performed the surgery. He also did not come on that day. That would have been an opportunity for the doctor, the specialist, to explain the circumstances to him. Unfortunately, he happened to come many of the time on a different date and therefore missed his doctor. The other doctors who were seeing her, him may not have an in-depth understanding of what may have gone on during the surgery. So for me, the missing link is the fact that when he was given the dates to come, he happened to have come on different days. But for the first time, when he came on Monday, he met a doctor. But subsequently, he kept on coming on different days. That was unfortunate. They explained to him and made him to know that he needed another surgery to correct it. At least they were able to communicate that to him that he needed another surgery to correct it. He will not be uh, able to remember the word incisional hernia, and so, and he may not be able to link, but they will explain to him that he needed another surgery to correct it. That he told us, he confessed that that was told to him. He also said that he was told he has to come and pay 800 cities in order to get this problem corrected. You know, it's a surgical operation. There are so many items that are used for the operation. Uh, if he has sought management help in the process, management will have resolved that issue long ago for him to have the surgery. And so therefore, we are in a position where management is even assisting him already to get his labs done, to get an anesthesia review done, and then get the surgery also done. Yeah. Is there anything Rich Hospital could have done to avoid this problem from happening? I think that good communication could, could avoid some of these things. Um, even when he came to the clinic at the wrong date, if somebody has really sat him down to explain to him that, look, you have to come on this day to meet your doctor, uh, this event wouldn't have played out in this way. But the information we would also like to give to public, the general public is that in situations where you have direct maybe consultation or direct interaction with clinical front, front line staffs. If for any reason you are not satisfied, management is always available. Our doors are open. We have suggestion boxes around. We have an information department. But even management itself also apprises itself. And to the central region now, and the investor of Cape Coast is set to introduce PhD programs in its distance education programs as part of its postgraduate module of graduate education. The move, according to the investor, is to make education more accessible to the working population and also expand the frontiers of knowledge for everyone. The provost of the College of Distance Education, Professor Isaac Gailon, made the disclosure at a dinner in Cape Coast. Richard Kujanyako has more. Professor Isaac Galeon revealed a committee will soon be inaugurated to manage the restructuring of the college's mandate to enable it to run more programs available on the regular module. He explained the initiative is important, recognizing the urgent quest for many people to access graduate education in the country, but are unable to do so because of work and distance. 
Professor Isaac Galdon dismissed claims that accessing university education by the distant module is not as effective as going through the regular module and noted available records show students who graduate from the College of Distant Education perform competently and sometimes better than their colleagues on the regular programs. The problem is some people think that if you do it by distance, it is not at par with the regular. For us at UCC, whether you do a program by sandwich, by regular, by distance, they are at par. We ensure that quality is maintained, and so our graduates, once we produce them, it doesn't matter the mode by which they acquire their degrees. Whether it is the regular, the distance, or sandwich, they are at par. And we want to equip them with the necessary skills, knowledge, so that they can, and when you look at, they can move the nation's economy forward. Professor Isaac Galeon says the College of Distance Education at the University of Cape Coast is being prepared in a manner that will enable it to expand its operations to afford individuals the opportunity of postgraduate education. Richard Kwejonya Akon, Joy News, Cape Coast. And before we go, President Nane Kufado has assured that government will put out a statement shortly setting out a comprehensive roadmap, including the lifting of the ban on small-scale mining to deal with, on a permanent basis, the grave threat of Galamse to the present and future health of the country. The comprehensive roadmap, according to the president, will involve the reclaiming and reforestation of mine out areas, the restoration of impacted water bodies, and strict supervision of the processes of awarding mining licenses and its associated permits. President Kufado was delivering the keynote address at the sensitization workshop for traditional and religious leaders and stakeholders on the elimination of illegal mining here in Ghana. I assure you that shortly you will hear from government a statement setting out a comprehensive roadmap, including the lifting of the ban, to deal on a permanent basis with this grave threat to the present and future health of our nation. The comprehensive roadmap will address, amongst others, the following activities. Reclaiming and reforestation of mined out areas. Restoration of impacted water bodies. Strict supervision of the processes of awarding mining licenses and associated permits. The establishment of a mercury pollution abatement project. control of the engagement of excavators and Chang funds in mining areas and continued formalization and regulation of the small-scale mining sector. When the ban is lifted, you will have a responsibility, as was successfully discharged in the days of our forefathers, to continue to help preserve our lands, water bodies and environment. We all have a duty to say no to Galamse for our own common survival and the survival of those who are to come. And that's a wrap up of the latest news highlights we have. We have more news. So we'll be looking at the newspapers. Myself, Mamma Havi Osabwaje, Kojo Yangson. We'll be looking at all the stories in depth, front pages center spread, back pages, and then we'll look at myjoinline.com and the other news portals. Please make sure you get interactive as always. Facebook join us on TV. Watch us regularly there. You can also watch us live through My Online TV, which is a channel on YouTube, and let us know what you think. Well, please stay with us. We will be right back.